O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup, you yourself who secure my portion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, today the Church celebrates the feast of Saint Jeanne de Chantal, a French wife, widow, and mother, who at a point in time in her widowhood felt called by God to serve his people, and by founding an order of nuns with her spiritual advisor, the patron saint of the Diocese of Wilmington, Saint Francis de Sales, a woman of immense charity and kindness to all, especially to those who were overlooked. My dear friends of Christ, how many people in this world have you and I overlooked? Not noticing them as we're doing our food shopping. Not noticing them as we're walking on the beach or walking on the boardwalk. Not noticing them as we pass them by in any place that we might find ourselves. How often do we overlook people, and most particularly those who are in need? For the times, my friends of Christ, that you and I have overlooked anyone in this world, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are a mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who made St. Jane Francis de Chantal radiant with outstanding merits in different walks of life, grant us, through her intercession, that, walking faithfully in our vocation, we may constantly be examples of shining light. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord cried loud for me to hear, Come, you scourges of the city. With that, I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate which faces the north, each with a destroying weapon in his hand. In their midst was a man dressed in linen, with a writer's case at his waist. They entered and stood beside the bronze altar. Then he called to the man dressed in linen, with the writer's case at his waist, saying to him, Pass through the city, through Jerusalem, and mark a towel on the foreheads of those who moan and groan over all the abominations that are practiced within it. To the others I heard the Lord say, Pass through the city after him and strike. Do not look on them with pity, nor show any mercy. Old men, youths and maidens, women and children, wipe them out. But do not touch any marked with a towel. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the men, the elders, who were in the front of the temple. Defile the temple, he said to them, and fill the courts with the slain, and go out and strike in the city. Then the glory of the Lord left the threshold of the temple, and rested upon the cherubim. These lifted their wings, and I saw them rise from the earth, the wheels rising along with them. They stood at the entrance at the eastern gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the God of Israel was up above them. Then the cherubim lifted their wings, and the wheels went along with them, while up above them was the glory of the God of Israel. The word of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. Praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. From the rising to the setting of the sun is the name of the Lord to be praised. High above all nations is the Lord. Above the heavens is his glory. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. Who is like the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high? 
and looks upon the heavens and the earth below. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen, again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered in my name, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. In 1963, Pope St. Paul VI promulgated a conciliar constitution from the Second Vatican Council called Sacrosanctum Concilium. It's the sacred constitution, or it's the constitution on the sacred liturgy. And in it, the Council Fathers and Pope Pius indicate that Christ is present in four ways. One, He's present in the gathered assembly. Two, he's present in the spoken word of God. Three, he's present in the person of the priest. And four, he is most supremely present in the consecrated bread and wine that are the Eucharist. These four holy ways that Christ presents himself to the world and to one another reminds us of how very present we need to be to the presence of Christ. And we hear that, do we not, in today's gospel, that Jesus says where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Christ is present, truly, in the gathered assembly. St. Jean Francis de Chantal knew this in her heart. And she, along with her spiritual director, St. Francis de Sales, knew that gathering people together, people of faith together, would invite the presence of Christ and allow the presence of Christ to be in them and to work through them. St. Jane Francis de Chantal under the guidance of St. Francis de Sales, recognized that there was a great need to gather people together. She realized that religious orders of her day would only accept women of a certain age and of certain health. So, for example, women had to be, say, 25 or younger in order to enter the convent. And they had to be in perfect health, in fine fettle. Otherwise, they would not be seen as fit to enter into religious life. Yet, St. Jane Francis de Chantal recognized 
in her ministry to others and in her spending time with others that there were many women of advanced age or of middle age who had a devotion to our Lord and who would have loved to give in their life to him. She recognized that there were women who were widows who would have loved to have served the Lord in the contemplative life and in community life. And she recognized that there were many who were infirm and who also would have loved to have given their life in service to the Lord. And so under the guidance of St. Francis de Sales, Bishop of Geneva, she was given permission to found a new religious order, the Order of the Visitation, that just as Our Lady brought great joy to her older kinswoman, Elizabeth, by bearing Christ to her, so these older women, these widows, these infirm women would gather together, and they too would bring joy to one another by bearing Christ in their gathered assembly. Saints in the making, the next time that you are at Mass, daily or weekend Mass, or even if you are at home watching the Mass, gather those you love together. Recognize the fact that being gathered as an assembly focused on worshiping Christ, hearing the spoken word in which Christ is present, hoping to receive the Eucharist in which Christ is supremely present and brought to us to the hands of the Christ, to the hands of the priest in which Christ too is present. Recognize that his presence is in the gathered assembly and therefore being present to Christ, recognizing his presence, you too might be made new and might be made whole and know how deeply Christ works in and through you, gathered together as one in his body. United as the body of Christ, we offer our prayers to our Father. For the Church, through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we should continue to faithfully build God's kingdom on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected officials, may God increase in them the desire to protect life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, especially those suffering from any effects of the coronavirus, May they experience the healing power of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community of faith, may the grace of our baptism continue to help us witness to the truth of the gospel in both word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, marked with the cross of Christ, may they be brought to new life with him. Let us pray to the Lord. And for those petitions we will not add in the silence of our hearts. And for all of our benefactors, remembered most especially at today's Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, through the waters of baptism, you have adopted us as your children. We beseech you to hear and to answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through to the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for now.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Most merciful God, who were pleased to create and blessed James de Chantal, the new man in your image, the old having passed away, graciously grant, we pray, that renewed like her, we may offer you the acceptable sacrifice of conciliation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sitting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only to the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen, I say to you, that you who have left all and followed me will receive a hundredfold and possess eternal life. The Lord is my portion. He is good to the soul that seeks him. Let us pray. By the power of this sacrament, Lord, we pray, lead us always in your love. Through the example of blessed Jane Francis de Chantal, and bring to fulfillment the good work you have begun in us until the day of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Saints Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And you, thou old prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <laughs>